Canada will make mifepristone available to Americans where access to the abortion medication is threatened. And funeral services are today for a woman shot last weekend after pulling into the wrong driveway. Good morning. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. There's discussion of a cessation of hostilities in Sudan between two warring factions. Nothing's been agreed to. Warfare over the past week has killed more than 400 people. NPR's Tamara Keith reports the Pentagon is staging military personnel to be ready if U.S. personnel need to be evacuated from Sudan's capital, Khartoum. U.S. government personnel in Khartoum are sheltering in place as violence between rival military factions rages in the Sudanese capital. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says no decision to evacuate U.S. personnel has been made. It's just really about pre-positioning military forces. Um, If and when there's a decision Uh, to move towards some sort of uh, military evacuation, then we'll have more to say about that at the time in terms of size, scale, scope, and, uh, and what we're doing. Kirby said the main focus now is still on urging peace in Sudan. But the situation in Khartoum is dire, with food shortages and civilians caught in the crossfire. Tamara Keith. NPR News. The U.S. Supreme Court has a deadline of midnight tonight to decide whether to uphold restrictions or a ban on a common abortion medication. Meanwhile, Dan Karpinchuk reports Canada is prepared to offer Americans access to the medication Mifepristone. In Ottawa, Families Minister Karina Gould says the Canadian government would work to provide the drug to Americans seeking medication abortions. She says she's especially concerned that laws in some states criminalize those who cross state borders to access reproductive health care. She says care is needed to not further endanger those who are seeking access to reproductive health care and services. Dan Karpinchuk reporting. Five Oklahoma counties are under states of emergency. This follows deadly tornadoes and violent thunderstorms this week that killed three people. There's been substantial damage reported. Funeral services will be held today for a 20-year-old upstate New York woman. She was shot to death last weekend after her vehicle accidentally pulled into the wrong driveway. From member station WAMC, Jesse King reports. Kaylin Gillis and her friends were searching for a party in the rural Washington County town of Hebron when they mistakenly turned into the driveway of 65-year-old Kevin Monahan. Police say Monahan fired twice at the group, killing Gillis. Monahan is charged with second-degree murder. Friends and family will host a community gathering before Gillis' funeral in Schuylerville, New York. Her father, Andrew Gillis, spoke with reporters Wednesday. If any, anything... I'm thankful for her, is that I got to tell her that I love her before she walked out the door. Monahan's lawyer says three vehicles pulled into his client's driveway, and Monahan was frightened when he pulled the trigger. For NPR News, I'm Jesse King in Albany, New York. Authorities in Alabama have now arrested a sixth person in connection with last weekend's deadly shooting at a teenager's birthday party. Four people were killed and 32 others were injured. Alabama officials say investigators believe gunmen fired into the crowd during the celebration. This is NPR.